Action potentials. Here we have a neuron, also known as a nerve cell. And just like most cells in your body, it has a nucleus, a cell membrane, a cytoplasm, and other organelles. However, it also has extra features. For example, here we have dendrites. These are connections which bring information into the neuron from other neurons. Here we have a stretched cytoplasm, also known as an axon. And the axon ends over here in the axon terminal, where it connects to other neurons. Now a neuron can be at rest, which means it's not firing any action potentials, or it can be firing action potentials. And what takes it from rest to firing and vice versa is to do with charges moving in and out of the neuron. So let's zoom in here and see exactly what happens during an action potential. Okay, so we've zoomed into the neuron. So here's inside the neuron, and this area represents outside the neuron. That means these black lines represent the cell membrane. So first of all, let's get familiar with what we have on the cell membrane. Over here, we have a sodium potassium pump. This is a carrier protein that uses ATP in order to transport three sodium ions out of the neuron and bring in two potassium ions. Of course, this is a form of active transport. Now, the sodium ions on the outside are building up, so they want to diffuse in. However, because they're ions, they're going to need a sodium ion channel. Now, most of these sodium ion channels are closed. Also, they are voltage gated, which means they will only open up when a specific voltage has been reached. We'll talk about that later. But for now, we can see that the sodium will not be able to enter. So the concentration of sodium on the outside of the neuron will increase. Looking at the potassium, we have a similar story. The potassium is building up inside the neuron. It will try to diffuse out. Now, fortunately for potassium, the potassium channels are open. So that means potassium will be able to diffuse out of the neuron. This means that the amount of potassium inside and outside will eventually balance. Because remember, diffusion always balances stuff. If we look at the relative position of the ions, we can see that we have four times more positive ions outside the neuron than we have inside. Of course, we don't just have four ions. There are millions and billions of them. But comparatively, there are more positive ions outside then there are inside. This means that the outside of the membrane will be more positive than the inside of the membrane. So here we have a potential difference. We can measure this by putting electrodes in the neuron. And if we were to do this, we would get a graph like this. Potential difference and at rest, the potential difference would read minus 70. This represents the RMP, which means resting membrane potential. So in other words, when the membrane is at rest, the potential difference will be around minus 70 millivolts. Here's a tip that I hope will help you. Whenever you look at the Y axis on this graph, the values always represent inside of the cell. Right now we can see the inside is minus. And if you look at the graph, we're at minus 70. So keep an eye on that. Now, the potential could stay at minus 70 potentially forever, if the neuron is not stimulated. However, let's see what happens when the neuron does get stimulated. So just a quick recap of what we've done so far. The sodium potassium pump pumps out three sodium ions and pumps in two potassium ions. The sodium ion channel is closed meaning that sodium ions stay outside and their concentration builds up outside. The potassium channel is open, so that means some potassium ions will be able to leave, which will evenly distribute the potassium inside and outside. Overall, we said the outside is going to be more positive than the inside. And on our graph, the resting membrane potential is minus 70 millivolts. Now it can stay like this forever or Let's say here, it got stimulated. So what does that mean for the neuron? Well, upon stimulation, 
sodium channels are going to open up. This means that sodium ions outside will be able to diffuse into the neuron because there's a high concentration of sodium ions outside compared to inside. Now sodium ions are positive, so if you have a rush of positive ions into the neuron, what does that do to the charge inside? It's going to make it more positive and we can see that the graph starts to go up. Now the moment it hits minus 55 millivolts, at this point we've reached a threshold. This is very important because sodium channels which are voltage gated love this charge. So they're all going to open up. Now we have loads of sodium channels which have all opened up because they're at the right threshold. This means even more sodium can enter the neuron and the charge rushes up all the way to plus 40. Now we can say that the inside of the neuron has become more positive than the outside. Next, those sodium channels will spontaneously close and then potassium channels will open up. Now, will potassium enter or leave the neuron? We can see that the amount of potassium outside and inside is the same. So is there a motivation for potassium to go in or out? Well, not based on its concentration difference. However, potassium will move. And it's going to move because of its electrochemical gradient. So, think about it like this. Potassium is a positive ion. That means it's going to be attracted to something negative. Is the inside more negative or the outside? Well, we can see the outside is more negative right now. So that means the positive potassium ions are going to be pulled out of the neuron. So they're traveling down their electrochemical gradient. So if potassium ions are leaving the neuron, that means the inside of the neuron is losing positive ions. So the charge of the neuron begins to drop. It keeps dropping until it gets to minus 70. Once it gets to minus 70, these extra potassium channels will start to close. However, they're quite slow. That means while they're closing, some extra potassium ions manage to escape. Kind of like in the movies, where you have a gate that's about to close and a character is just making its way through. So just like that, some potassium ions make their way past the slow closing gates. So now the charge becomes even more negative because we've lost extra potassium ions. Eventually the extra potassium channels have closed and the membrane goes back to its original minus 70 millivolts. Okay, so let's have a summary of the graph. The resting membrane potential is minus 70 millivolts. Somewhere down the line, the neuron gets stimulated. This opens up sodium channels and sodium rushes into the neuron. This causes the inside of the neuron to become slightly more positive. It will keep going up until it hits the threshold. By the way, this little part right here is called a generator potential. We'll talk about the significance of it later on. Now, once the membrane's potential difference has hit the threshold, minus 55, this causes loads of sodium channels to open up. And now we have a huge rush of sodium coming into the neuron. This causes the neuron to become even more positive until it gets to plus 40. This jump from minus 55 to plus 40 is called depolarization. This is because the inside of the membrane was negative and now it's become positive. So you can say the poles have swapped once we get to plus 40, all those extra sodium channels that opened up spontaneously close. And instead, potassium channels open up. When potassium channels open up, the potassium ions begin to leave the neuron. They travel down the electrochemical gradient. This causes the inside of the neuron to become negative again.
This part is called repolarization because the poles are going back to their original, from positive back to negative inside the neuron. However, all these potassium channels that have opened are very slow to close, meaning some extra potassium ions leave, causing the membrane's charge to become even more negative. This part is called hyperpolarization. However, eventually, all those extra potassium channels have closed, and the membrane's resting potential goes back to minus 70, which is also known as the resting membrane potential. Perfect. Now, this part over here, from the peak all the way back to the resting membrane potential, is called the refractory period. During this time, the neuron cannot be re-stimulated which means the neuron cannot fire another action potential until it has recovered. We'll talk about the significance of the refractory period in another video. So, in this video we covered the resting membrane potential and action potentials. Hey guys! If that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.